going to talk about saline soils today and there are a lot of questions about what exactly is a saline soil? How does that compare to a sodic soil? <laughs> okay, well first of all, I even had to pull the sheet out because I didn't know what the official classification was with this. So here's what they say for a saline soil. You can have two uh, up to over four in terms of electrical conductivity. Your soil pH is supposed to be less than eight and a half. Your sodium adsorption ratio is supposed to be less than 13 and your soil physical condition is still considered normal. So does that really help me figure it out as, uh, as an agronomist? Not much. What I'm looking at is, do I have a salt problem out there? Is it salt versus sodium? Okay, so if I've got very high sodium levels, well then that's a sodic soil. If I just am talking about salt, that's a saline soil. All right, so you got through the chart there and the, yep. the technical classifications, <laughs> but here I am talking to the drain tile guy, and the big question people have is, will drain tile just fix this for me? Well, it's absolutely going to help, and that's the first step. So we get questions all the time about, well, what can I do here? Do I need to uh, uh, have the right variety and all this kind of stuff? Look, that's a Band-Aid approach. So Well, you need that Band-Aid for this well, year. Yeah, and, and maybe you need to raise barley or something like that. Uh, or we were talking about uh, foxtail barley in our last no, show. No, don't that's raise gonna, that. Don't right, raise that's that. going to survive very well in those situations. But here's the whole thing. You've got to start with drainage. Salts, remember, are leachable. So what we want to do ideally is turn this saline soil, we want to turn it into a salt soil and have it leach out. It will absolutely leach out, but it's not going to if you have poor drainage. You've got to get some tile in that ground. All right, so one of the things that guys like to do is put something that has sulfur in it to try to help leach things yeah, but, out. But here's the thing, you may not need anything. The only thing may be drain tile for you. We want to look at your soil test. Here's where I'm going with this. Sometimes I see guys that have a thousand parts per million of sulfur already sitting there in the soil. Well, what's going to happen with that sulfur? It's going to bind with that saline that's out there. You're going to have all kinds of salt and it's going to absolutely leach out. You have totally fixed your problem just with drainage. Now, let's say that you have low sulfur levels and you have very high calcium levels, well, yeah, then in that case, I'm probably just gonna throw straight elemental sulfur out there. All right, so let's say you're talking elemental sulfur. Let's say that you've got a pH of eight, because that could be one of the things that happens here. As you get those high salt levels, it could raise pH. Yep. So if you've got a pH of eight, is elemental sulfur the answer to that, or ammonium well, sulfate, or gypsum, well, or something okay, else? Okay, well, we're, we're worried about the wrong problem here. The first problem is you've got to fix the drainage. The second problem is you've got to get rid of your salt. When you do those two things, you're going to find most likely your pH is going to come down naturally. So I'm not worried about any of the rest of the stuff. What I am concerned about is make sure you've got sulfur out there and lots of it to help get any of those salts out of the ground. All right, now to get things growing in those spots, because here's the problem we see, Brian, is, hey, nothing's growing in those areas except kochia. And now I've got this big Roundup resistant kochia issue out in my farm, or in different parts of the country, yeah, maybe know, a but, different weed. Yeah, but again, we're worried about the result instead of what's the actual problem. Once we identify it's saline soil, then we've got to look at, hey, do I have enough sulfur out there if I do and I've now fixed the drainage. Okay, then the next thing is, do I have good calcium levels or not? If I don't have good calcium levels and let's say I want to get some more sulfur out there, you know what? I might throw some gypsum out there that might help me in this whole solution. I'll replace some of those salts with calcium and I'll have sulfur binding with some other things in the soil, some of those salts. Uh, that saline that I've got out there and I'll flush that stuff out. So over time this is going to fix itself and then I'm not too worried about all this other stuff. Sure if you want you can go throw some uh, straw out there and incorporate that into your soil in the short term. Getting more organic material in that soil can absolutely help but you know what we got to get the drainage fixed and we absolutely do want to get something growing on there as soon as we can. All right one other drainage question we get this a lot in these problem spots in my field should my tile lines be closed closer to the soil surface and how much narrower should they be? Well, this is a judgment call. So we see a lot of the saline soils are in the western corn belt where we don't get a lot of uh, a lot of rainfall. So in that case, when you don't have a lot of rainfall, you might as well have those tile lines pretty shallow, three feet deep, something like that. And if you've got a real bad saline spot, for example, then I'm going to put a whole bunch of tile in. I might put it at 15, 20 feet apart. 
because a lot of times where we find that high saline areas, they are also very heavy soil. When you have very heavy soil, not a lot of rainfall, you want the tile relatively shallow and relatively close together. Saline soils can certainly be a big problem because oftentimes in those areas we get little to no yield. And if we can fix those problems and get up to a normal yield level, it can be a huge boost for the whole farm. So follow the strategies that we've talked about today to fix saline soils on your farm. One of the other things that will help your yield overall on your farm is controlling our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed?